Hello and welcome to this edition of Issues and Insights. I'm your host Kendra Scott and I'm thrilled to once again be at my home away from home, the Kentucky High School Basketball Hall of Fame in beautiful downtown E-Town. And of course joining me is the Executive Director and All-Star Basketball Guru, knows everything about high school basketball in Kentucky ever, to not even be born in Kentucky, which is mind-boggling, is Mr. Paul Najar. Great to see you, friend. Great to see you too, Kendra, and thank you. And actually, hey, I'm... I, the more I'm here, the more stories I hear, the mm -hmm. more knowledge that gets uh, put into this noggin, and it's so much fun, and we've got a lot of things going on in the coming months and in the coming fall and winter seasons this year as basketball is quickly upon us. It's hard to believe it's basketball season, which mm. is personally my favorite time of year when football and basketball overlap, mm. so we're getting exciting, getting pumped up, and as the year is kind of drawing to a close, it's the ramping up of basketball season, so that means for you that just like players are going back to the locker room and hitting the courts and getting busy. You have a lot going on here. So tell us about some of the exciting things going on. From hey, Halloween on, you have from activities. From Halloween on, you know, it's this time of year, October 15th, mm -hmm. the high school season begins. The, the gymnasiums, or you hear that familiar pitter-patter of the feet mm -hmm. and the pounding of the basketballs and the swish of the yeah. nets. So teams are dreaming right now. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have here. That's what we're about here at the Kentucky High School Basketball mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. Dreams that are realized, dreams that are just within reach, mm -hmm. dreams that just falter off, and dreams that have been achieved. And in the coming weeks, you know, near is Halloween, and we're going to be a part of that big Halloween festival across uh, the street from us at the State Theater, where mm -hmm. it's a huge party. There are and so many there were kids. so many, there were a few thousand kids Gosh. there last year, <laughs> all in costume, and so many of them came across mm -hmm. the street take pictures at the uh, at the basketball monuments yes. we have and in front of our uh, Hall of Fame mm -hmm. signage but we encourage them so bring your kids over we'll have candy awesome. just like they will across the street mm -hmm. I think there's a few thousand pounds of candy <laughs> oh distributed over there jack them uh, up <laughs> exactly <laughs> Halloween night but it's great to see these kids the families come out and we're certainly proud to be a part of that mm -hmm. we'll be here next week well Halloween night, yeah. October 31st. It's a Wednesday night. We'll be here. So come on across the street and we'll have some candy for the kids and, awesome. and maybe a little basketball treat as well. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. will you be dressing up in costume perhaps as your favorite basketball player? Mm, no. I think my <laughs> uniform days are long past, but it could be my favorite official. It could be go. my favorite coach uh -huh. uh, or least favorite coach. Ooh, uh, that'd be a good one. <laughs> or, or someone else's least favorite yes. coach. Who knows? Ooh, but, I'm intrigued. Uh, you know, I, I dressing up as Mike Shashevsky in these parts, you could get yelled at a lot. You could get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't do that. No, please don't. But, no, <laughs> but it's a good thing, uh, you know, for us just to just in this community to see that many youngsters come out mm -hmm. and that many who are so in love with basketball. Last year, we had we had kids who were in their favorite players' uniform of and course. jersey. Yes. And, and and one had an official's outfit, so we took a lot of photos, put them out on Facebook. It was so much fun, and and that. That, of course, uh, like I said, Halloween night, mm -hmm. all the kids will be out. So come over to the Kentucky High School Basketball Hall of Fame. We'll try and stop traffic for you, and we'll get you across the street uh -huh. safely and mm -hmm. have a good time here. Oh, kids will love that. And you're right. There's so many kids and families downtown. They're participating in activities across the street. So mm -hmm. it's really just a natural segue. More candy, um, more fun. Family. There you go. Another Bring photo up with the uh, with the big basketball monuments. I love it. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So then, of course, November right around the corner. And a part of that, um, another big event downtown is Dine mm. Around Downtown. Tell yes. us about that. Dine Around Downtown was such a huge success mm -hmm. last year and we're so looking forward to it again we had uh, a dinner option last year mm -hmm. had about 400 people come through oh my gosh it was incredible That's it's huge. such a terrific event for elizabethtown the downtown merchants and businesses and all the folks who patronize mm -hmm. the event you get a great night of friendship and fun and great food mm -hmm. from the local restaurants. Yes. It, you just can't beat it. I know, and, and it benefits charity. And it benefits an important charity. Uh, we are so thrilled to be a part of it again, and we're really looking forward to uh, the big crowds, mm -hmm. the big basketball fans, because inevitably the basketball chatter will begin, oh, and yeah. people will start. You'll get a little E Town Panthers <laughs> chant going, you'll get a little Let's Go Trojans going. Uh -huh. You get all these rivals going back and forth, and it's, you know, you get 
get a big crowd like that, that's what they're supposed to do, right? Exactly. They get ramped up. Well, when you're on the hard wood, you just can't help it. Mm. It's part Especially of it. Especially yes. in here. In exactly. Here. Yeah, so it there. will be a fun, uh, fun event. Again, we're so looking forward to it. We'll have uh, we'll have, we're not sure what food option we're going mm -hmm. to have, either a, an entree or an appetizer or a dessert, but uh, we'll have something good here, and yeah. it will be terrific to see everyone out that night. It, it's the night E-Town comes out, mm -hmm. and it is, you know, so many people, uh, so many cities have, uh, like their light up downtown, mm -hmm. sometime in November, whether it's around Thanksgiving or maybe, you know, where I'm from in, originally in western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh does it somewhere around the second or third week in November, mm -hmm. and, and that would be a little neat thing to do as well maybe correspond but it's a little early for Christmas and I know East Town has <laughs> Elizabeth Town has their own uh, little uh, send up as a start up for Christmas yes. but hey it's almost here believe can you it believe or not. it yeah it's, uh, yeah yeah it's, it's, it's yeah it's like just, eight weeks or something it's less than that exactly oh, right. so so thrilled that basketball is starting mm -hmm. games starting soon mm -hmm. the calendar year is winding down but the basketball is heating up and that's it what's is. that's what's happening in the near future mm -hmm. at the hall of fame and and down the line we're going to have some other neat things to talk about awesome and you are going to do some winter hours so we need to tell folks about that because because as the time changes and it gets a little cooler then um, the hours will change here at the yes they hall will fame. and we'll do our winter hours november 1st through okay. uh, the end of march uh, and that will be from uh, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 11 to 4 mm -hmm. will be the winter hours. And our executive director, Ken Trivett, who will be on the show a little later, mm -hmm. you'll be talking with him. He'll give you a little more detail about that. He is our board chairman, uh, Ken Trivett, a uh, longtime coach from around the state. Mm -hmm. and the founder of the Kentucky High School Basketball Hall of Fame. We're, we're glad that he's here, and, yes. and, and you'll get to talk to him in a minute. But uh, Thursday through Saturday, so we'll be open Thursday, Friday, Saturday mm -hmm. from 11 to 4, mm -hmm. uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., and special events. If you need your, your, your little special event, your mm -hmm. dinner party, your uh, lunch outing, your group, a group visit, anytime, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, mm -hmm. or earlier than 11 o'clock on Thursday or Friday or Saturday, we're available anytime, and you just contact us, contact us here at the Hall of Fame, and, mm -hmm. and we'll take care of you. And that's really awesome, and folks in this town are always looking for a space to meet. I can oh, tell you that. I, I, um, but this is a perfect place. Our Rotary Club met here, and thank you so much, because you were such a great host. And so to get a fun. tour mm -hmm. and see the facility, and then to have um, a great little, we had a concession-style lunch, which was even better, my favorite concession foods. Um, and so people forget about that this is a great venue to host events. So I really exactly. hope that people will take advantage we've, of that. We've had Rotary here. We've had... Uh, corporate meetings here, mm -hmm. regional meetings. We've had uh, uh, anniversary celebrations, oh, cool. birthday celebrations, mm -hmm. team banquets and Makes such. Sense. And we're going to work really hard with the schools, the mm -hmm. local schools, to get their girls teams and boys teams mm -hmm. in here so that they can get that feel and get that excitement going mm -hmm. because there is nothing like Friday night in Kentucky and basketball season in Kentucky. We're thrilled for the upcoming season. It's going to be awesome. And I love this time of year because everybody is a winner right now. Everyone has that vision. The dream blank is slate. blank slate. Exactly. First blank start, slate. anybody could win the tournament. Anyone yeah. could be state champion. And in my playing days, uh, Kendra, there was nothing like that working out getting those getting those getting your body and your mm -hmm. mind right along with a bunch of other teammates to to create that atmosphere where winning is expected mm -hmm. it isn't wished it isn't hoped for it isn't dreamed it is expected mm -hmm. and you can take those dreams that you have in the off season this is the time right now october and november you mm -hmm. prep to make those dreams expectations and those expectations reality and we wish the boys and girls teams from around the state mm -hmm. but particularly here in Hardin County we wish them all the best for this upcoming season yeah they're gonna do great they have a wonderful mm -hmm. foundation a great tradition people like you said the expectations are high and terrific coaches oh my gosh great coaches um, a legendary coach may be joining us later on the show today yeah. I'm excited about that passionate coaches. yes and mm -hmm. just like you said it's that excitement it's legendary it's the hard work and our teams we expect that we really do expect great things from all of our local schools so good luck yeah good luck do and well. come down to the Hall of Fame don't forget Halloween mm -hmm. we're gonna have a big night Halloween and dine around downtown on November 10th. Should be a lot of fun. And you'll want to get your gifts for Christmas. We've there got merchandise go. here. We've got 
our encyclopedia book is phenomenal, phenomenal. and we're going to be packaging that for a Christmas mm -hmm. uh, holiday gift um, with a DVD oh. of our movie 32, which mm -hmm. chronicles the history of high school basketball mm -hmm. in Kentucky in 32 minutes, plus our essence of the game. I love that. short film yes. here. It's about 11 minutes long. So you'll want to look into that. Go to khsbhf.com for more details. Our Kentucky High School Basketball Hall of Fame website. I love it. Great Christmas idea. Mm -hmm. Great Christmas we shopping. We had someone come in this fans. week yeah. to purchase three of them. Oh my gosh. For gifts, specifically. That's a super idea. Oh yeah. Okay, check it out. So yes. folks can always come down and visit. You can check it out online, but you can start your shopping now. I dare say it, but exactly. you can get a jump on, jump on it. So, all right. Well, I thank you so much for your time. I always enjoy talking with you and hearing about all the exciting things you have going on. Always this place a is always hopping. Thank you so always much, Kendra. Always hopping. So we've a got a very special guest coming up in Mr. Mr. Ken Trivet. That's exactly right. Yay. Okay. And now it's my honor to speak with someone that most of us do know across the Commonwealth. He is a legendary coach and basketball guru, and he is also the founder and board chairman of our Hall of Fame, and that is Mr. Ken Trivet. Welcome. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. We are thrilled to have you, and you do. You have such a long storied history, and you have great stories to share of your time in basketball and what it means Kentucky. Tell me, when did you first fall in love with the sport of basketball? I think I was born <laughs> in love with basketball. Mm -hmm. My dad was a Hall of Fame coach, mm -hmm. uh, and I was born in 1949, mm -hmm. and he was coaching at Pikeville High School. Yes. And uh, I grew up as a gym rat, so to yes. speak. Yes. <laughs> uh, he was, I was very fortunate. He took us, the family, there were four of us, four children and mm -hmm. mother, and we traveled the state of Kentucky. He played teams from one end of the state to the other. Wow. His teams played in five Louisville Invitational tournaments. Mm -hmm. And in one road trip, he went to Adair County, mm -hmm. Paducah-Tillman, mm -hmm. Owensboro, and ended up the road trip at Dunbar. Oh my gosh. Now you could have been at, in Los Angeles probably. Right. <laughs> and so forth, but in cars, they traveled mm -hmm. in cars. And, uh, on so back roads. On it, back, oh yeah. yeah, the old roads. Yes. And so it was an incredible trip. They won three out of four games in wow. Adair County. Uh, and Coach Burr uh, was the only team that beat him that on that trip. And wow. of course, uh, but uh, he he liked to take his team on the road, mm -hmm. and I we liked it a lot too, my brother and I, because when we went to Lexington to play, they had in the Lafayette Hotel they had mm -hmm. two giant lions Ooh. made of stone mm -hmm. inside the lobby, and as soon as we got there, my brother and I mounted those lions <laughs> of <course>. and rode <laughs> them. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, awesome. I still remember that, that experience That's and the experiences true. I had as a child. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so it was a, it was a exciting time for me from the very sure. beginning. It was and, a lifestyle. Uh, exactly, it was a lifestyle. And of course, I left there and went on and played uh, at, at the Pikeville High School where mm -hmm. my dad had coached. He had retired in 60 and okay. I, I did not play until 64, 5, 6, mm. or 7. So, but anyway, I didn't get to play under him. And the wonderful thing, though, as good a coach as he was, he never interfered mm -hmm. with my with my coaches that coached me. Oh wow! He stayed in the background mm -hmm. and let me have the experience. And I think that was a wonderful thing. Yes, because a lot of coaches don't do that. And I imagine the expectations were very high as being the coach's kid that you're going to be a superstar player, or phenomenal, right. or right. that he's going to be giving you special treatment. So for him to sit back and merely just be a spectator is pretty pretty remarkable. Well, I think that uh, I look back and see it the same way because mm -hmm. I never felt any pressure. I enjoyed my high school career immensely. That's wonderful. Played football, basketball, and mm -hmm. baseball. And, uh, and gained a little bit from each one of them. I, I really have a great deal of, of uh, regret for those kids who play just one sport today mm -hmm. because I don't think they get the total picture or the total experience that it mm -hmm. takes, uh, I think, to be a well-rounded person. Uh, but now my academics suffered a little bit, let me <laughs> say that. And I told somebody I got a high school degree in osmosis. <laughs> So, but, but our school was so good yes. and demanded that you do your work, mm -hmm, that good. was not an option. Good. Uh, I wasn't working real hard at doing my work, mm -hmm. but if you didn't get your work, you didn't play ball. Well, there you go. And, if you, and so forth. And also, you had to take the grades home to mom and dad. Yes, so, you did. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was my high school, my, my, young, my experience as a young person, mm -hmm. I would not trade with anybody. Uh, we were poor, but everybody else was too. Exactly. It was in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So nobody actually was poor because 
all that was before. That's exactly so, right. Everybody was the same. Everybody was the same, and it was a melting pot of different types of people and, mm -hmm. and a great experience. But anyway, I went on to play a couple years of college ball mm -hmm. at Pikeville, mm -hmm. and then went on after that to the University of Kentucky as a graduate assistant with Joe B. Hall when wow. he first took over the University of Kentucky program, and that was a great experience. Well, I haven't yes. But of course, my dad often said, bread cast on water will always return. Mm -hmm. Dad, in 50, 1957, was playing in the state tournament at Freedom Hall. Mm -hmm. Joe V. Hall had his first job at Shepherdsville High School uh, nearby. Mm -hmm. And Coach Hall, Dad, he wanted to pick my dad's brain about what he was doing. He was running a full court press, which nobody had done That's before. That's unheard of at that unheard time. Unheard of. And he had organized the full court press, and Coach Hall wanted to know about it. So Dad took the time and, and gave him that time. And, of course, Coach Hall was a... UK graduate. My dad was a UK graduate. He was the first player at UK history to wear the number one jersey. Oh my! In 1937. Yes. And uh, now he wasn't that great a player, but he was a good player. But he contacted tuberculosis oh his my. sophomore year after his sophomore year, and was in the sanatorium in Louisville. Uh, it took him three years to, to recover. Oh my stars! And so his, his but he did go back to UK and finish his degree in lettering baseball for two years. Good for with him. One lung. Amazing. <laughs> they, they, Amazing. They taken one of his lungs. But, and then he went into coaching, and, he, and I'll never forget, he, he smoked camel cigarettes, which smoking was, you know, the, the, the norm. The norm. He smoked camel cigarettes and drank Coca Colas. <laughs> I do remember that. And to keep me from uh, ever smoking, he always, he did that, he pulled a trick on us. Okay. My brother and I, he left a Coke up, upstairs mm -hmm. you know, on his desk, and he knew we'd be up there ferreting around as right. we call it. <laughs> meddling. Meddling around <laughs> and he put a cigarette in it and let it melt in there. So of course we took a drink of it and that, oh. all that tobacco and ooh, it was awful. And so I, I that, never, was it. that was it. <laughs> I, he, he didn't want us doing what he had done. There you so, go. But anyway, he had a great career out in, uh, and it gave his career and his experiences gave me an opportunity to be exposed to basketball at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And Coach Hall, I just can't say enough about him. Oh, no. Most people saw the coach Joe B. Hall I got to know the man mm -hmm. and the coach was great but the man was even better I bet wow what an incredible experience because that's what kids living you know dream of when they grow up so of course then you pursued a wonderful career in coaching so tell me a little bit about um, how you became the founder and executive director of the Kentucky Association of Basketball Coaches well I was at Clark County coaching in 1991 mm -hmm. I got to know Curtis Turley who was a Western Kentucky guy. Yes, and, and we've interviewed Kentucky him on our guy. show. Exactly. And uh, we knew the people in our ends of the state. Mm -hmm. And we knew that there was a need to have a coaches association that could enhance the game for the coaches and the players. So we got our heads together, called a meeting in, at mm -hmm. the KHSAA offices, and put together a plan, drew up a constitution and bylaws, and we didn't know how it'd go, but a few years later, we had over a thousand coaches wow. that were involved. Now, the, what we were told, this has been tried before. You, it can't be done. <laughs> uh, they hate each other too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you'll never get them to play. Right, they'll never agree. But uh, my wife, I, I have to give her credit. Uh, we were sitting in front of the fireplace, and we always, uh, almost every night, we talk to each other mm -hmm. and discuss the, what went on in the day and sure. this and that. And I was talking about the Coaches Association mm -hmm. and, she, and how difficult it's going to be. And we, I was talking about ideas that we had. And mm -hmm. she said, Kenny, what are you going to do for them? Oh. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, they're going to join because it's in their best interest to join. What is the Coaches Association going to do for the individual coach? What kind of programs are you going to have that enhance mm -hmm. their a professional career. There you go. And so we developed an awards program second to none. Mm -hmm. We had all-star game the East West. We started the East West game back again. Had all-star games for the kids. We had awards for the kids, the coaches. Mm -hmm. We had three levels of awards for coaches. The Century Club. Mm -hmm. Every time you won a hundred games, each each level 100, 200, 300, oh. we had an award for you. And we recognized you on the floor state tournament. Mm -hmm. We had coach of the year for the coaches. Yes. Every year for the coaches in each region. And, uh, and then we had one other award, a Legends Award. So, but we developed an awards program and awarded them on the floor at the state tournament in Rupp Arena. Yes. So back to my wife, <laughs> what are you gonna do for them? <laughs> there you go. Ta-da, and they love that. <laughs> they love that, but Curtis Turley uh, was a key, key to that because 
he gave he gave us the contacts in Western Kentucky. He was mm -hmm. well thought of. Yes. And I, my dad was coached in Eastern Kentucky, mm -hmm. and I, you know, it was a no-brainer for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it was easy for me, and I'd recruited. I'd been a assistant coach at Moorhead State University, mm -hmm. so I had recruited the whole state. So I knew I had a lot of contacts around the state. Uh, and so we, we just went together and found the people who believed in, in our project and lo and behold that was in 1992. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, 35 <laughs> years I guess. Yes, and still going strong. And still going strong. That's awesome. Now you also had a hand in, you were the founder of the Kentucky Indiana Challenge Cup. So you not only worked here in Kentucky but then across the river. So tell us about that and um, that Challenge Cup because that's quite a dynamic series. Yes it is uh, and we're looking to expand it. Oh wow. When we, right now it has five teams, five mm -hmm. of Kentucky's better teams, five of Indiana's. Uh, one girls game and four boys game mm -hmm. but the original idea five years ago was after a few years that we would split it there would be four girls games in Indiana while we were playing four boys games in Kentucky and mm -hmm. then they would go back and forth each year the girls mm -hmm. would come to Kentucky and then back to Indiana so that was the idea and that's where we are right now Indiana's kind of hold balking on me a little a bit, little bit. But, but this is what we designed it for the girls should have the equal opportunity to yes. participate mm -hmm. and uh, we did the girls game for only one game because we didn't know how it was going to work and we needed to make get that attendance mm -hmm. but uh, anyway it's gone well six years and now it's time to improve it uh, we're going to Owensboro with it next year and cool. probably be a permanent site at the oh, Owensboro great. Sports Center which has got a great tradition mm -hmm. and uh, we're hoping to have the girls have like I say four games four games and whoever wins the most gets the, gets the cup uh, if it's a tie, the, team, the, school, the state that has it already will mm -hmm. keep it. Oh, okay. If ties, the state keeps it. So you have to win the majority games to get the cup each year. And we've held it, uh, I think this is the sixth year. We've had all five years we've won the majority of games. Mm -hmm. And actually, overall, we've won 70% of the games. Oh, wow. Go so Kentucky. those people who say that Indiana high school basketball <laughs> is better because they win a all star game yeah. at the end of the year, that makes them better than us. Mm -hmm. Well, all star games are not indicative of the best teams and the best basketball. They have four times the number of people to choose from for an all star team. There you go. Uh, but when you put our best teams, against their better teams and see how mm -hmm. they play against each other our coaches and our players can, can measure up any day and we proved it so now they've got to prove that they're as good as us <laughs> that's right they want it back <laughs> and this, this red we've got on that's not for indiana by the way that's, oh gosh no. No, no 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 that would be for our other schools yeah. here in this day louisville right. and western, western. Yeah. Whoop, whoop, that's but right and blue even blue. john harden i think we've got some red oh, black got got there you go there's some <laughs> <laughs> we represent them all that's your yeah. moorhead blue too yeah. <laughs> well let's talk about this beautiful facility obviously and as board chairman i know you all have, have a, a hefty job um and lots of dreams and visions and it's come to reality but Tell us a little bit about the future. What can we expect from the Hall of Fame in the next few months? Well, let me say this real quick about how this all started. So Ron kept, it was very persistent, and so we formed an organizational committee, and the organizational committee found a community that wanted us, and the city of Elizabethtown was very hospitable, so here we are. Yes. Now, what's our future hold for us? Well, this past year, we celebrated 100 years of high school basketball Amazing. by inducting 100 player mm -hmm. our hundredth player which yes. was our centennial class we have a video called 32 mm -hmm. that documents the history of the game we have a book encyclopedia of high school mm -hmm. basketball that is the most magnificent publication on high school basketball every Phenomenal. team that ever played every mm -hmm. coach that ever coached is in that book and uh jeff bridgman did this work a starving artist mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was a tremendous piece of work so we have and then of course we opened the building Yes. And, and, show, and uh, premiered the documentary, and the new Centennial book was out. So all <laughs> that, so we, and we had a Centennial celebration working with the KHSAA across mm -hmm. the state we were involved in. So we did all that. Mm -hmm. So we have all that accomplished, and now the next, the next jump is to move forward. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to promote high school basketball and enhance high school basketball. Wonderful. So we have a plan going into the next several years. We want to make high school basketball in Kentucky, the whole state of Kentucky actually needs to be our Hall of Fame. Yes. This is the hub of the wheel, mm -hmm. but the whole state's our Hall of Fame. We're appointing regional directors in oh. every region, mm -hmm. deputy directors that will assist us in our efforts out there yes. in the whole state. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to be, we've worked with the History Museum in, mm -hmm. in Frankfurt, the Kentucky Historical Society. They have a history mobile that will be traveling the state of Kentucky with an exhibit much like this in a smaller scale 
promoting high school basketball in every nook and corner of the state for the next two to three years. Phenomenal. So we have, we're going to go on the road, mm -hmm. we're going to be out in the regions, and we're going to make the Hall of Fame something that the entire state can be proud of. While the History Mobile is out on the road, they're going to be promoting this place. Perfect. So we, we're, we have a plan. It and, sounds great. And you know, old coaches like to have a plan. I, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have a plan because you plan. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's so, for sure. what my old coach used to tell me. There so, you go. See there. <laughs> I know. I'm an old basketball guru too. Um, so this has been an incredible experience, and we are so proud of, to host this facility here in Elizabethtown. It means so much to us, and we love seeing folks come from all across the Commonwealth to be a part of it and to support it and lead it. So thank you for your efforts and the efforts of the board to make this dream a reality. Um, thank you for listening to Coach. Bevers. He probably appreciated that very, very much. And he's one of our key volunteers here as well. So we can't thank you for what you've done. And we look forward to the future of the Hall of Fame because it can only grow and get better and expand. So we want all those folks from across the Commonwealth to make, like you said, this is the hub. So come visit, be a part of it, get in touch with you all, contribute their artifacts and make this the biggest and best it can be. Well, let me say, the best is yet to come. I like that. And the joy the high school basketball has brought to this state is remarkable. The people and players and everything. High school basketball has brought more joy to more people. So we are Kentucky basketball. Part, uh, Kentucky University of Kentucky is not the only. It's not. Is not just the only basketball in the state. Right. Kentucky basketball is high school basketball, college basketball, Western, Louisville, Murray, Moorhead, as well as UK. Now they want to claim that they're the only one. Nope. High school basketball help make them what they are. That's exactly and right. And gave them the players and the, uh, the ammunition to develop the program they have. So it all started with us <laughs> and we're gonna drive that home. Amen. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so on that note, we have to wrap up today's edition of Issues and Insights. I certainly appreciate you being here with me, Mr. Ken. It was a great talking with Paul, and we hope that you will join us the next time right here at the Kentucky High School Hall of Fame Museum. I'm your host, Kendra Scott. We'll see you next time. Hope you have a great day, and let's go <laughs> guest cards, cats, toppers. Kentucky every, basketball. Kentucky basketball. There, there you go. go. <laughs>